If you're just tuning in, how are you leveraging technology? Hmm. Right, this is our reality. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Your Africa One with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 And we still have John Ovidi with us. Um, John, thanks for staying with us. And amazing insight, aptitude, attitude, because trust me, me. I like to be on TV, but I don't think I, I have embraced technology because you would think I'm supposed to be a 24, uh, 21st century mother, you know, 21st century human being. And it is almost like it's, a, it's really tough for me to do so many things online. And I feel the need that, okay, because I've not learned it properly, uh, uh, so I, I can't do it and all of that. But what you're say, telling me now is just let me just go and I learn as I, I proceed. That's what you're saying to me, right? Yes. Okay, so there are many people like me, right? There are many people like me that it's very difficult for them to integrate technology into the existing structure of their business. So what, where would be the easiest um, places to start with? So maybe, for instance, people that are into retail, retail business. Let's start from retail. Then I know um, I saw Slum to School did something amazing for technology oh, and brilliant. school. You know, So I, I know the schools have been able to embrace um, technology quickly because they had to teach their students they started using zoom and all of that but women that have small businesses smes right that have small businesses that do not know how to go about integrating technology in their businesses how do they even start where do they start from okay so there's there's so many ways you can attack technology but first of all it comes down to what problem are they trying to solve so i believe that like you said, women who have businesses and want to get technology, the number one issue they always have is like traffic. How can I get more customers? Mm. Right. So in order to answer that question, everyone who owns a business must learn how to advertise. So gone are the days when you would say that advertising was for the digital marketers. Right. Everybody needs to learn how to advertise on the Internet. Mm. That gives you control over your business. Now, everybody should have learned this before COVID. But fine, here, we, we are here now. We've got to learn how to advertise. So everyone can learn that. Now, the question is, how can we learn that? Now, Facebook, now, regarding advertising, just accept this. Facebook is the internet, hmm. right? Regarding advertising, Facebook is the internet. So Facebook has a product called Facebook Ads, Facebook Advertising. And because Facebook now owns um, Instagram and on WhatsApp, but I'll stick to Instagram, Facebook now owns Instagram. If you know how to create a simple Facebook ad, you will be able to reach people on Facebook and on Instagram. Now, Facebook has interest-based targeting, and that means that you're able to target people with specificity in any location in Nigeria within specific interest groups and bring them toward your business. And that is what everybody needs to learn. Now, Facebook has a program called Facebook Blueprint. I don't know why it, it doesn't get a lot of press, but it's called Facebook Blueprint, and it is a program that Facebook created to help business owners learn how to create ads by themselves. I guess... They figured that if businesses could create ads or they could learn how to create ads, they would spend more money with Facebook. So that is a free program. It's a free program that if you go right now and Google Facebook Blueprint, it's totally free. You don't have to pay any money to access it. Go through the training. And once you go through the training, you'll be able to create ads for your business. That is the number one uh, thing that business owners need to learn, how to use Facebook ads to get paying customers for your business. Number two, then you might want to learn how to set up an online store because you, you don't want to be outsourcing everything. If you can set up an online store and manage it, fine. You're good. If you can get traffic to your business, set up an online store, that's a starting point. So how do you set up an online store? Go and Google this app called Shopify. It helps everyone to create an online store. Locally, we have one of our local solutions. Uh, Flutterway just created a, a solution that could help people to create online stores on their platform that also exists. So business owners can go and research these, combine your knowledge of using ads to attract attention to your business and being able to manage an online store. And that should be fine with our infrastructure that enables dispatch riders to get goods to consumers. I think any small business owner should be able to use this combination on a fundamental level to stay in business. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that, that, was a, <laughs> that was a lot. So I, I want to ask my question, leveraging off what you discussed when we talked about uh, when Sanzi shared her fears about people losing jobs and you coming up with that yes. apt answer saying that there will be new jobs that are created. But if you look at it, when we have especially our big cops, um, big cops have um, 
technology problems or they want to buy new technology, we always look outside. So we look to America, India, sometimes China to be able to get this. Now, my question is in two parts. If we keep doing this, then who would harness, how do we harness the local talents that we have and help the local startups? And two, how easy is it for tech startups to find angel investors or even early stage investors to invest and believe in them to grow? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not much of an, an authority on angel investing and all that, but I'll, I'll just take your first question. So, so it is true that people tend to go to India and import technology, but we do have a lot of talented developers here in Nigeria. And I think if you look at the, the hubs, the, the technology hubs, you'll find the concentration of these people there. When Mark Gober came to Nigeria, that was one of his the first places he went to visit, that was one of the co-creative hubs at, at, at Yaba. So there are all these clusters of talents that are already um, creating fantastic technology. And so there's no scarcity of talents here in Nigeria. It's just a matter of, you know, if you have something you want to solve, do you have enough faith in the local ecosystem? And the thing is, it's even a lot more expensive now, right? I think it was just a couple of months ago when it was like a, a dollar was about 350 naira. Now it's about 450. So it's going to hurt you a lot more to keep on importing, uh, importing all this, all this technology and you're, you're paying in dollars and all that to look local. We've always had fantastic talent here. There are so many Nigerians who are great at programming, creating solutions, and they're putting out their talents on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and Freelancer.com and Guru.com, but they can actually get those jobs locally here in Nigeria. So those opportunities exist. Um, your question on on angel investing, those things those still those things exist in Nigeria. There's there's some opportunities here. Um, there's still so much that could be done in that industry. I guess um, I, I guess we'll see. But one thing that people look for when they are investing in Nigeria is still that issue of infrastructure. All right. Now, so it was interesting that when Mark Zuckerberg came to Nigeria. You know, at that time, there was still no Facebook office in Nigeria. And I don't think there's still a, an official, official presence in Nigeria. But he went all the way to South Africa to set up an office. And so what are we still talking about here? Basic infrastructure. So we have to still solve these problems of electricity, internet access, and, and general security. And I think that will attract a lot of investors. That would attract people who want to do business here. Now, uh, talk about business. It is very true that Nigeria, we have the numbers, um, 200 million people and still counting. So a lot of people see Nigeria as a huge market, which is true. But the fact remains that when we talk about numbers, the number of people who are actively, who are active on, uh, online. Um, on online is not even up to half of the population. So now there is this mm. belief amongst people, particularly um, low income earners, people in the rural areas and all that, that um, 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 embracing technology is um, or starting an online business is capital intensive. A lot of them will go ahead and um, give you that data is part of their reasons and it takes resources, which is the reason why they also believe that people who started first are the ones who earn the money. And then right after, um, like if you're coming right after, you can't make the money. So that's something I would like you to address. And also there is this second belief that a lot of them have um, that... Um, um, getting involved online would um, kill your privacy. We saw this happening with the uh, introduction of 5G network. If you would please um, address that. Okay, so the first question was one that had to deal with uh, early adopters um, getting a lion's share of the market. Well, the thing is, the, the market is still very huge. The, the, the market is really huge. As great as the work is that I'm doing, there's still a lot of people who don't know who John Obidi is. And that's just the way it is. And so anyone who says that because John Obidi has been in the space for a while, there's no, there's no piece of the pie for me, that, that, that's just not true. There's something for everyone. And so I think that people need to just get online. And I, I may mention of that, uh, the Facebook ads technology, that's the fastest way for anyone to get discovered. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about just creating an Instagram account or a Facebook account and waiting for them to come. There's a predictable way to get discovered in 2020. 
And that is by understanding the way these technologies like Facebook ads and other complementary technologies work and putting yourself out there. If somebody who maybe sells digital products or has an online store wants to be discovered today, you can be discovered today. Just know how to set up your ads on Facebook, which of course requires quite a budget. Not, it doesn't have to be that much, but requires something to start with. But once you get the word out there, almost instantly people that you specify begin to know about your business. So there is something for everyone. Secondly, privacy issues. Yes. Yeah, so personally, I'm, I mean, I've written a number of articles about privacy on social media, and that is a concern because if you buy a refrigerator today or any kind of electrical appliance, you are given a manual. You are given contraindications. You are, said, you, are, you are told, okay, do not do this, do not do that. This is how you can use this device yeah. safely. But these things do not exist for social networks, right? Nobody, these social networks, Facebook and all the other social networks, they don't give you a manual that says, you know what, these are the possible issues you might have if you come on social media. So we, the users, have to educate ourselves, right? So there are going to be privacy issues. And I think the most common form of like people's accounts getting hacked, hacked is something called phishing. So someone sends you a DM and says, oh, we are from Facebook and we need you to click this link to verify your account and boom, they steal your password and you, they, hack, they hack your account. There's so many, so many Nigerians who are not clued in that this is actually a thing. So people's accounts get hacked and all that. So I would advise everyone coming online to, yes, there's a lot of opportunity on the online space, but there are perils. There are bad guys out there who are looking to steal your information. And so you've got to learn. Get on YouTube, get on Google, and research on ways that you can keep your, your information secure. There are different things like um, two-step um, authentication, um, like where people they have to send a verification code to your mobile number, and so on. Also, people can call your phone and say, you know what, we are from Facebook, we are from Instagram. We just sent you a code to your phone. Tell us the code so we can give you, you know, all people need to understand that these things as they exist are scams and so they can protect themselves from it. I don't think that the social networks um, protect the users sufficiently yet, mm -hmm. uh, but until that is all sorted out, I think that we need to learn how the game works and protect ourselves sufficiently. All right. Thank you. So, um, I, I'm really wondering, do you ever see us going back to brick and mortar? As, um, no, it, well, it's true, as the third world, because um, is this um, sudden love for technology going to be something that will be short-lived? Or do you see us truly embracing all the, the what's it called, all the things that comes with um, technology? I think that even when you look at the way the COVID situation is developing, things are still going to play out like this for quite a while. Okay. Because even if we're trying to make a vaccine, I don't know if that's going to be the solution or anything. For quite a while, people are still going to be taking severe precautions, like wearing face masks. Even when the aviation in industry opens up, I mean, internationally, you know, there's still going to be a lot of precautions. And so... I, I see people, you know, still staying away from public gatherings for quite a bit, of, for quite a bit, right? And so what that means is brick and mortar will always exist, but it will be a slow transition. You know, we, we saw some data that came out saying that it might be till like 2024 yeah. before things go back to totally normal, like the pre-COVID world. So between now and then, there's still going to be a huge uh, use case for online. So brick and mortar will exist, but to be a slow transition. So I would say that people just don't wait until we transition back to brick and mortar. Get online and learn to use the tools of this new economy because we're going to still be having to adjust to this new reality for quite a while to come. Okay, so if you had one thing to say to that young person out there right now, that is watching and that wants to take advantage of this technology and embrace it and now build a brand or build a business or grow their income, you know, what would it be? Because right now, we also have fraudsters harvesting children from secondary schools into fraud. 
you know, giving them a laptop. And so and now, Bitcoin whenever, yeah, that, whenever yeah. somebody hears anything about technology, online business and all of that, the first thought that comes to the mind of a young person, some of them, is fraud. You know, they believe that it is only fraud that they can use as an avenue to make money. So what would you say to that young person, you know, and how should they begin, you know, to, to, be, to be technologically aware? So I wouldn't give tips because we'll probably not live here today. Though. There are just so many things. But what I would say is that there's a lot of people who educate consistently online. Mm. And some of these people have formed online communities, right? I have my online community. It's called Head Start Africa. And on there, there are some of the most brilliant professionals in Nigeria who constantly educate people on different aspects, on business, on finance, on investing. There are other communities too, like um, Money Africa, founded by a friend of mine, Tosin Olaseinde, where people can learn about financial inclusion, how to invest, and all that. So there are all these online communities. And there's another one called um, Online Publishers, um, the Online Publish Entrepreneurs um, Community, founded by Adiri Adewo, where if you want to learn to publish your book online and make money from publishing your books, you can join that community and learn all that for free. So there are so many people forming all these communities. There are Facebook groups that are wholesome, where people can join and learn these things. So the beauty of joining communities is that you don't have to figure everything out yourself. Mm. There are these Nigerians just like you who have figured these things out. They have gone the way and they are always teaching. They're always teaching on webinars. They're teaching on Facebook Lives, on Instagram Lives, all right? There's so much you can learn just by listening to all these broadcasts. The beauty of this COVID-19 period is that a lot of people are going live. And so there's an outpouring of knowledge. So I would advise young people to, to tap in. Now, at the beginning, it might seem like information overload. You don't need to get everything. You need to just figure out what is your path and what are the who are the people who are giving out information on that path. That's one. Two, what are the communities that are being formed around this path that I want to walk in? They exist. So look for the communities online and join the one that works for you. Awesome. I think we can leave it there. Thank you so much, John Obidi, for being part of us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We are still coming back for more tips off camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, so quickly, um, AK, what do you think, you know? Well, I think that technology has come to stay, whether or not we like it. Mm. It's not going anywhere. And we have, we should be thankful for the pandemic because it has moved us further than we should have gone mm -hmm. if there was no pandemic. But right. I would employ everybody, our government especially, to use technology to better our lives. Use yeah. technology to improve our lives in agriculture, employment, financial inclusion, name it health. Let's just use technology for our good. Yeah. How about you, Sansi? Well, absolutely. I think there is nothing much, uh, nothing more to say. I'll just give out this advice, especially to young people that I would give to uh, my siblings and my cousins that, listen, it's true that maybe you're in school and so because of that you have to schedule your finances and all that so the same way you schedule your finances schedule your on online time if you know the online classes you need to attend look at your data and say you know what okay so i have two gig and i would need 500 mb to attend this class schedule it like like you would manage your money mm -hmm. right because it's it's really that's not an excuse that's, yeah that's, that's so that's true oh, Sanzi. Yeah. if i started making money that's 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 what i do <laughs> yes <laughs> Let's, talk. Talk about, let's really talk about this because we still have like two minutes. <laughs> Distraction online is crazy. Like today, yeah. I was supposed to go and check my whether they have graded my assignment online. <laughs> By the time I picked up my phone, it was yeah, Instagram. Like, so <laughs> why you said it right, distraction. Yeah. And he and John said something very valid. You can't stop people going online. Because yeah. it's a new outreach. Everybody wants to blow. Everybody wants to make a, you know. Take advantage. Let me try if I can, right. you know, be, be as famous as Mr. Macaroni. <laughs> so you can't stop people. What I would say that we should do is, as he said, John, mm -hmm. choose your path. Right. Choose your community. Right. Yeah. Choose who you want to follow. And Absolutely. Who you want to to. I'm, I'm, that's very apt for me. So what I did during this period, the COVID period, I unfollowed a lot of people. I did too. Oh, yes. I unfollowed. <laughs> no, no, no. I had to unfollow a You're lot of right. people because they were also part of my distractions. Then I followed the people that I wanted to Added get value. Yes, value from. So I think it's very key because now your system is loaded with so much information. So you have to be careful. 
whether we like it or not, technology is here to stay. Now, so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been an insightful conversation, if I can say so myself. Keep all the conversations going on social media platforms at Wait You Africa and at Plus TV Africa. And um, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Technology is central to development. It touches one and all and is an important instrument of our national progress. Our leaders, I hope you're listening. Let's leverage on technology. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you, ladies, again. Thank yeah. you. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>